Hello everyone, so in this recording I'm going to talk about sensitivity analysis, more specifically shadow price and binding constraints. We talked about binding constraints in the N3 reports, but we can also find out about binding constraints in the constraints table in the sensitivity report. We said a constraint is binding if the left hand side value after the optimal solutions is equal to the right hand side value. How do we find the left hand side value? Uh, we take the optimal solution of the decision variables and plug it into the linear function on the left hand side of the constraint. So for example, for the pumps case, for Blue Ridge hot tub problem, we had on the left hand side x1 plus x2. And we know the optimal solution, x1 is equal to 122 and x2 is equal to 78. So if we plug these values into our left hand side of the pump constraint, we get 122 plus 78 which is 200. This value is displayed as the final value here, so it's equal to 200. We see that this value, 200, it is equal to this value, the right-hand side. This means that this constraint is binding. So if we can, you can just look at this table. This gives you the left-hand side final value, and this gives you the right-hand side, which is already given in the problem. So the second constraint is also binding. The third constraint, however, we see that this value is less than the right hand side. This means that this is a non-binding constraint. What does it mean to have a binding constraint and a non-binding constraint? A binding constraint is a limiting constraint. So if we could get more resources in this case, if we could increase the constant on the right hand side of this constraint, we would be able to produce more and we could make more profit. We could improve our objective function. So binding constraints are the ones that prevent us from improving our objective function. The non-binding constraint here says that we're not using all of the resources we have available, we're using less than that, so we have some leftover tubing. Let's talk about shadow price. We said if we wanted to make more profit, if we wanted to improve our objective function value, we could try to improve our binding constraints. In this case, let's talk about the first constraint, what would happen if we were to increase the right-hand side of this constraint by a single unit? Shadow price tells this exactly. So if you were to increase the right-hand side of constraint 1 by 1 unit, our objective function value would increase by $200. If you were to increase the right-hand side of constraint 1 by 2 units, our objective function value would increase by 2 times 200. As long as these increases or decreases are within the allowable ranges listed here, we can use shadow price to find our new objective function value. One thing we can't get from this is our optimal solution. Once we change right hand side of the constraint 1, we have more resources. That means we can produce more, which means we can improve, improve our objective function value, but we don't know which product to make more of. So in order to figure this out, we need to rerun the problem to find the values of the decision variables. So the shadow price lets us know the object, how the objective function value changes if we were to increase the right-hand side of a constraint by a single unit. It does not tell us how our optimal solution will look like, so we need to rerun the problem if we want to find out how much to produce of each product. What would happen if our shadow price was negative? So you can see in this table, we have a negative shadow price. You would read this just like you would read a positive shadow price. So if you were to say, how would my objective function value would change if I were to increase the right hand side of my first constraint, this one by one, we look at this, my objective function value would change by minus 200. So I just read it exactly as it is from the table. This means that since it's negative, my objective function value would decrease by 200. Again, if I were to increase my right-hand side by 2 units, my objective function value would change by 2 times negative 200, which is minus 400, which means that my objective function value would decrease by $400. Again, make sure these values are within these allowable ranges and you are changing a single right-hand side at a time. So you can't be changing two of these at the same time. This is what negative shadow price is. You just read it exactly like it is on the table. 
Let's talk about negated sh shadow price. Negated shadow price tells you how much your objective function value would change if you were to decrease the right hand side of a constraint by a single unit. In this case, if we were to decrease the right hand side of this constraint by a single unit, my shadow price will be minus 1 times 200. So I will just take the negative. So if I'm decreasing the constraint 1 by 1 unit, I will be decreasing my objective function value by 200. Basically, when you're reading any shadow price, when you're increasing the right hand side, you read the shadow price as it is on the table and you just plug it in into the objective function value. If it's negative, that means it's decreasing your objective function value. If it's positive, it is increasing your objective function value. Depending on the type of optimization, this will have different consequences. If you're talking about a maximization problem, increasing the objective function value is a good thing. But if, if you're talking about a minimization problem, increasing the objective function value is a bad thing and decreasing is a good thing. Let's take a look at the third constraint. If we were to increase the right hand side of the third constraint by a single unit, our objective function value would not change because the shadow price associated with tubing constraint is zero. This is because this is a non-binding constraint. If we were to increase the right hand side, if we've got 2,881 units instead of 2,880 units, we will just have another extra leftover tubing. This would not allow us to produce more. That is not a binding constraint. That is not a limiting constraint.